The plane behind me today has only 30 horsepower more than a Cessna 172, and we're going to fly it up to 17,500 feet, just below our Class A airspace, and see the performance. The service ceiling of this plane is actually 28,000 feet, and to go above that in any plane requires our VSM. It has amazing performance for the horsepower. And also in this flight, we're going to see the, just how economical it is to fly the plane. I've made a detailed video of this plane that is very popular and has around 80,000 views. I appreciate all the comments you make that encourage us to do more. This is the most detailed video available. Please watch if you haven't already. You'll find the link in the description below. One of the most important things to check with an unpressurized aircraft flying up to that altitude is that you've got adequate oxygen. There's a very simple onboard system here. You just hook in the connector, turn this level up to on, and then this gives you the flow rate so you can check that you're getting oxygen to your nasal cannula. For this flight, we're actually gonna use our own portable system. One of the reasons is that it has this on-demand, which helps conserve the oxygen and the take lasts a lot longer. We're also gonna carry a pulse oximeter with us. This is extremely important and very inexpensive. It helps monitor what your actual oxygen in your blood is and make sure that you stay well above your hypoxia range. We observed a very unusual phenomenon in this video when we were editing. Now my daughter would like to believe it's a fairy checking out the plane. My guess is it's just a reflection of the camera lens. But before we take the flight, I wanted to show you just how bright the LED lights are. The gentleman who bought this plane from us a few years ago upgraded all exterior lights to LED. Now he recently bought a Cirrus SR22 Turbo, so that's why we're selling this plane for him. If you're interested, the sales link is below in the description. Alright, let's go fly. A gradual increase of power is good for any engine, especially on turbocharged engines. When I set up the synthetic vision overlay in the video, I noticed something interesting. The climb rate reduced during the gear transfer, and then it increased again. This engine is rated for full power up to 24,000 feet. While when we're flying, we are always gentle with our planes. It significantly reduces the wear and tear. So after our initial climb out, we transition to a cruise climb. One thing I like about this Mooney is that it has an automatic wastegate preventing overboosting on the engine, especially on colder days. Steep turns and slow flight will give you a good feel of handling an aircraft. Since we fly so many different types of planes, we know a steep turn is a good way for a pilot to synchronize with the plane. For some pilots, it is harder to do steep turns because of pilot-induced oscillation. While well, we never teach students to perform steep turns immediately, instead gradually increasing the bank and letting the student build the ability on how to handle it. Take a look at just how smooth you can do a steep turn in this Mooney. Climbing through 6,500 feet, all engine parameters are normal, and a cruise climb power setting of 28.5 inches and 2,400 RPM. I dug into the Airplane Flight Manual, or AFM, to get details on this plane's performance at various power settings and altitudes, and then compared it with our flight data. The information shown is spread throughout a number of charts. It took me a while, but I made this summarized table for you. These power settings can be obtained using different combinations of manifold pressure and RPM configurations. I use the most appropriate settings in each category that are better for the engine, fuel usage, and endurance. At 12,000 feet and 65% power, you're at about 162 knots true airspeed and you're burning about 10.5 gallons. That's 12 knots faster than you are at 4,000 feet. Coming up on 12,000 feet, let's get our oxygen set up. Now a good altitude to fly unpressurized turbocharged planes is around 10 to 13,000 feet. They can deliver 75% of their power, which can provide about 10 to 12 knots better speed than a standard engine. At higher altitudes, they provide for better performance, 
but you do need to use oxygen continuously. On longer climbs, you can set up the autopilot using heading mode and a climb rate. That way you can monitor other functions. We're also going to be checking our oxygen levels periodically from here on up using a pulse oximeter. This is an inexpensive item, but can be a lifesaver. Hypoxia symptoms vary from person to person. When you're flying with someone else, make sure to tell each other your hypoxia symptoms if you know what they are, and that way you can monitor each other. Now while the curvature of the Earth is best seen at 35,000 feet, it starts to become visible here as we're reaching 17,500 feet, just 500 feet below our Class A airspace. And there are a few interesting things about this altitude. The atmospheric pressure is half of sea level pressure, and so is your body's oxygen intake. At this altitude, your horizon is 165 miles away. Now while it's 20 degrees below Celsius outside, inside the cabin is fairly comfortable. The Mooney 262 can use a maximum cruise power of 78.5% at this altitude. As we increase our power to maximum cruise, all of our engine temps are nice and low. We're getting about 180 knots of true airspeed. And remember, this plane has only 210 horsepower engine. And that's why this is such impressive performance. It's also fairly consistent with book numbers. Although we use AFM numbers to lean the mixture, it's still important to watch your TIT or turbo inlet temperature. It's very helpful to have a digital engine monitor, that way you can see more accurate numbers. The TIT limitation of this plane is 1650 degrees Celsius. We like to keep it below 1600, so you might have to increase fuel flow just above AFM numbers. Now Mooney had a goal to achieve one mile per horsepower in the famous Mooney M20J 201. And in ideal conditions, it can fly 201 miles per hour. So even though people rarely fly high altitudes in non-pressurized airplanes, if you look at the capability of this plane at 28,000 feet, according to the AFM, the plane achieves over 200 knots or 232 miles per hour with just a 210 horsepower engine. I just don't know of any other certified port place airplane that can do this providing about one knot of speed for one horsepower besides the Mooney 252 airplanes. Currently with a tailwind, we are getting a ground speed of 207 knots. The glide ratio of a Mooney M20K 252 is 12.7 to one. So you can glide over 30 mile radius at this altitude. I counted about 16 airports just within this glide radius here. Now obviously for most descents we plan properly so that we don't need to use speed brakes very often, but in some cases they are very useful, especially when you're descending from high altitudes so that you don't shock cool the engine. So our camera battery died, which means we missed getting the perfect Mooney landing. I hope you've enjoyed watching our video today. I would greatly appreciate if you take a time to like this video and subscribe to our channel as that greatly helps us in growing our channel.